<clears throat> Good evening class and tonight we will discuss on assaults and resistance covering article 148 until 151. So let's talk about assault. Article 148 talks about direct assaults. So before we discuss uh, what is direct assault, let us first define who are these persons involved in direct assault or in assault cases. Now, first, we must know who is a person in authority. So, a person in authority is any person directly vested with jurisdiction, whether as an individual or as a member of some court or governmental corporation, board or commission. So, these kinds of person are deemed persons in authority. So, na asila jurisdiction uh, because uh, it is vested by the law or by the court or by the government. An agent of a person in authority, this is a person who by direct provision of law or by election or by appointment by competent authority is charged with the maintenance of public order and the protection and security of life and liberty, such as a barrio vice lieutenant, barrio councilman, barrio policeman, so kaning sa atong mga barangay, or any person who comes to the aid of a person's in authority. So basically, uh, kaning sa barangay and any person who comes to the aid of persons in authority are considered agent of persons in authority. Now, in order to be an agent of a person in authority, one must uh, have the responsibility with the maintenance of public order, that is why kaning atong mga tanod, and protection and security of life and property. So, why do we define, uh, why do we have to define who is a person in authority and agent in person in authority? Because the cases of assault can only be committed against a person in authority and agents of person in authority. Now, there are two forms of direct assaults. The first form is without public uprising by employing force or intimidation for the attainment of any purposes enumerated in defining the crimes of rebellion and sedition. So, uh, dapat there is no public uprising. Unlike the crime of rebellion and sedition where there is public uprising, uh, in the case of, uh, in the crime of direct assault, there must be no public uprising. And then the offender employs force or intimidation and then the aim of the offender is to attain any of the purposes of the crime of rebellion or any of the objects of the crime of sedition. So, we go back to what is the purposes in rebellion to overthrow the government. We go back to the purpose of sedition to, in, uh, to have social or political changes. But again, in assault, there is no public uprising. So that is uh, the first form of assault. Uh, the offender employs force or intimidation. Now the second kind of assault, which is common, uh, commonly committed, is without public uprising, by attacking or employing force or by seriously intimidating or by seriously resisting any person in authority or any of his agents while engaged in the performance of official duties or on the occasion of such performance. That is why a while ago, we defined who is a person in authority and who is an agent of a person in authority. Because again, the second form of, is, of assault is committed against them while they are engaged in the performance of their official duties or on the occasion of such performance. So that is the second kind of direct assault. Now we have what we call simple assault and qualified assault. Simple assault is where the offender makes an attack or employs force, makes serious intimidation, or makes a serious resistance. The person assaulted is a person in authority or his agent. Or, uh, and then at the time of the assault, the person in authority or his agent is engaged in the actual performance of his duties 
or that he is assaulted by reason of the past performance of his duties. The offender knows that he is assaulting a person in authority or his agent in the exercise of his duties and there is no public uprising. Now, what you have to remember in assault, the of, um, number one, the person in authority or the agent in, of the person in authority must be exercising his duties or engaged in the uh, performance of his duties or he is assaulted because of his previous duties previous performance of his official duty and second the offender knows that he is assaulting a person in authority kaila si dia nga ang kanang idang gi intimidate isang gi attack is a person in authority again there must be no public uprising now when you say the intimidation or resistance must be serious no whether the offended party is an agent only or he is a person in author authority. Seriously, like, pwede mo yung duck point, for example, di ko pa da cope. That is no, not a serious uh, kind of resistance. So, dapat there must be force and intimidation. And then, uh, the as direct assault becomes qualified when the assault is committed with a weapon when the offender is a public officer or employee, or when the offender lays hands upon the person in authority, like Sumbangon uh, Janija. There was a case of um, direct assault wherein uh, one of the government employees of a provincial government, no, Ijangi Gukud ang governor, and he, because he was angry because he was laid off from the job. And uh, isang gigukod ang governor while shooting gun towards him. So, the crime was, of course, direct assault. Because there was violence and um, uh, it was a serious employment of force and intimidation against a person in authority, which is a governor. And um, uh, the the reason why the governor was assaulted because he was performing his official duties of uh, laying off, uh, removing employees from the provincial government. So that is Article 148, Direct Assault. Now we have Indirect Assault. So uh, you have to remember that there is no indirect assault when there is no direct assault. So, sa dapat na sa direct assault, bag o maga indirect assault. If there is no direct assault, then there is no indirect assault. You can find another crime to file against the offender. Why? What is the requisites of indirect assault? Number one, a person in authority or his agent is the victim of any of the forms of direct assault defined in Article 148. And then a person comes to the aid of such authority of or his agent. And the third, the offender makes use of force or intimidation upon such person coming to the aid of the authority of his agent. So again, kung why direct assault, why indirect assault? Okay, for example, gi assault ang governor sa offender. And then ay nakakita no nga nag tricycle driver for example nga ning labay, isang gitabangan ang governor. And then sa isang pagtabang gi sumbag po si Jag appeal sa offender. So the crime against the governor is direct assault. The crime against the uh, no. The crime committed by the offender against the governor is direct assault. The crime committed by the offender against a tricycle driver is indirect assault. Because indirect assault na ay person nga tabang sa person in authority or his agent. Now, in indirect assault, the offended party can be a private person. Unlike in a direct assault, the offended party can only be a person in authority and an agent of a person in authority. So, indirect assault, the offended party can be a private person. And again, if there is no direct assault, there is no indirect assault. So, that is what you have to remember in the case, uh, in the 
um, in Articles 148 and 149. Now, let's go to Article 151. Article 151 is commonly used now, no? Because uh, that is what is usually filed against persons who violate community quarantine provisions. So, most of the cases under, uh, most of the violators of community quarantine provisions are filed uh, with cases under Article 151, Resistance and Disobedience to a person in authority or agents of such person. Okay. So, there are two kinds of resistance. Number one, we have resistance and serious disobedience. And uh, another kind is what we call simple disobedience. So, resistance and serious disobedience, uh, a person in authority or his agent is engaged in the performance of official duty or gives a lawful order to the offender. So, for example, uh, nasakpan niya kay curfew na uli. And then, the offender resists or seriously disobeys such person in authority or agent. So, what si dyan ning uli? So, you can be filed for Article 151 for simply disobeying the lawful order of the person in authority or his agent. But you have to remember that uh, in order for 151 to apply, the act of the offender is not included in direct assault and indirect and in indirect assault. So, dapat there is no force and intimidation. Simply, you did not follow the lawful order of the person in authority and his or his agent. And then we have a simple disobedience. An agent or person in authority, again, is engaged in the performance of an official duty or gives a lawful order to the offender. And that offender disobeys such agent of a person in authority. Such disobedience is not of a serious nature. As ah, again, ang kaning simple disobedience, for example, nasakpan ka, walagi ka nag, walagi ka nag mask. Na dapat man mag mask ron, wear mask all the time. And then, wa ra ka, ning lakaw ra ka, wa ka nang pake, wa ka nang minaw, wa ni mag isuot imong mask, then, Pwede ka charge on under Article 151 for simple disobedience. But sa resistance and serious disobedience, for example, nadakban ka kay curfew. And then, instead of going home, kay paulion rin ka sa police, you run and run and run. Imo silang ipagukod sa ilang motor. So, uh, that is what you call resistance and serious disobedience. And again, Article 151, this is very common uh, nowadays, no, maujud ni ang cases nga i-file sa mga police officers against community quarantine violators. Although, if you want to ask, what is the punishment no, of Article 151? It's actually arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 if it is serious disobedience. And arresto minor and a fine ranging from 10 pesos to 100 pesos for passes if it is simple disobedience but usually what is filed is resistance and serious disobedience so it's arresto mayor and not arresto arresto mayor is more than one month arresto minor is one to 30 days arresto mayor is 31 to 6 31 days to 6 months okay so before you violate quarantine rules uh Please bear in mind that even if it is just an executive order, we have the revised penal code, Article 151, to punish quarantine violators. So basically, that is about um, direct assaults, indirect assaults, and resistance. So if you have questions, please chat in our group chat. Thank you. Uh, by the way, this is um, included in our midterm exam. Thank you and